of Early Childhood Education and Beyond. This is Chris Murray, and I'm thrilled to see everybody. I'm super psyched to introduce to you today um, a really um, inspiring woman in our field, Dr. Nefertiti Pointer. She is an early childhood specialist and trainer at the Devereaux Institute for Resilient Children. Nefertiti, how are you? I am very well. Thank you for asking. Thank you. Good. So today, you know, we're going through this this very interesting time in our lives, and I think we'll look back on it with also some wonder and grace also about what has come out of this. Um, but also we've got broken hearts and sadness around us and stress and anxiety and uncertainty and overwhelm and all sorts of not so pleasant emotions going on um, in our world today. And so just thank you so much for coming on with me and, and trying to give some support and guidance to people uh, in our field. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your career in early childhood. Sure, 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 sure. So I started my career as a teacher in Philadelphia, preschool and kindergarten. I always wanted to be a good teacher. I think as a child, I had adults shape my life and bring um, skills out of me that I didn't even know I had. And so whenever you would say, Nefertiti, what do you want to be when you grow up? I always said I wanted to be a teacher. And so I did all of my undergraduate work, got my master's degree, got a teacher certification. And then I got in the classroom, Chris, and my world was rocked. <laughs> <laughs> not, not necessarily in a good way. And so retrospectively, again, my teaching career was wonderful, but I did have some days where I was just troubled by children's use of challenging behaviors. Mm. Or the way I like to say it, behaviors that challenged me, because not every behavior is a challenge for everyone. But I met a few kiddos who really just were difficult to work with. And so I, um, I say I struggled. But I've also said on some of the webinars I've had the privilege to be a part of, those children have helped shape who I am today. And so I was a classroom teacher. I've been with the Devereaux Center for Resilient Children for almost 20 years now. And through that work, we get yeah. a chance to work with teachers who have a, a, what I call a Kevin. I call my kiddo a Kevin. You know, he's never absent. Wink, wink. He's the first one to get there, the last one to go home. And he, he really has helped shape who I am today. So I'm a national trainer with the agency. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I'm sharing my life with everyone else in the, in the middle of COVID-19. We're all here together. My husband, my 15-year-old, and my five-year-old. So that's a little bit about who I am and how I got started. Well, I love the representation of that wonderful but challenging child as a Kevin. Yes. Uh, so sorry to all those Kevins out there that might be watching us, but uh, I love that. That's that's super fun and engaging. So share with us an overview of the mission of the Devereaux Center for Resilient Children. I know that you've written a book yeah. that you partnered with Mary McCrane. Hopefully I'm yes. yep. uh, yeah. pronouncing her name right. Um, yeah. But tell us a little bit about your mission and, and like what is a typical week or month like for you, Nefertiti? It's a great question. So the Devereaux Center for Resilient Children is actually um, an organization which I like to say simply put, we are practicing prevention. The Devereaux Advanced Behavioral Health is one of the largest not-for-profit behavioral health organizations. We're in 13 states plus DC, but the Devereaux Center for Resilient children. Our headquarters are in Villanova, Pennsylvania. And here is again what I'd like our users, our, our, our listeners to think about today. Children who are 14, who are having struggles, particularly socially and emotionally, they were once four. And if as a community, we could give recognition, more recognition and more support when they are four, or as I like to say, when that foundation is being formed, maybe as they grow older, they won't need such levels of support. And so through resources and training and assessments, we are practicing, we're trying to practice prevention. And for me, that normally means I travel to to people that I don't know. I sleep in strange beds. I know if I say that, that sounds kind of weird, but it's what I do. <laughs> I travel and I go out and I talk to people about their Kevin Chris. And it is amazing to be able to just sit before people like the team that's listening to us today and their teachers. And we talk about Kevin. You know, from the research, we find that children who use challenging behaviors, it's one of the leading causes for teacher stress and burnout. And so one of the things we're hoping to do is just reshape even how we look at challenging behaviors. We've all been on some webinars this week where we said to the participants more than once, all behavior is a feeling to be understood 
or feelings to be understood. All behavior is a feeling to be understood. And as adults, if we respond to the feeling more than the behavior, which I have had to remind myself this week and last week and the week before, then we could be probably better at what we do. And so there's no quick answer to that typical week for me because no week is typical. <laughs> no week is typical. But I'll tell you one thing, Chris, and I'm so thankful for this. I do what I love. And if someone says to me, Nefertiti, what's your occupation? I don't have an occupation. I have an occupation. And when you do what you love, and you're with your friend, Chris, and then internet goes out. We didn't worry about that. We went into problem solving mode. And what was my message to you, Chris? We got this. Yeah. We figured it out. It, it went to do it 11 o'clock at night. We were going to get before you with this message. So <laughs> there's no typical week, but I'm doing yeah. what I love. And I'm so thankful for that opportunity. Yeah. And I'm so thankful for you and that you're doing this work. And it just comes through. I can feel it through this panel, the heartfelt the passion and all the energy and amazing um, knowledge that you bring to us to help our skills with, uh, with around ch challenging behavior and also around resilience strategies. So let's dig in a little bit deeper. So um, what are some tips around this approach or this model for developing resilience? And we can talk about it both for kids as well as adults and teachers that we serve. We have a lot of leaders who are following this um, this panel, so this this format. So with leadership and or managing adults as well as children, what are some specific um, strategies that you can provide? Sure, we were working this week on some of the work that we do with resilient leaders. We actually had a webinar series that um, we just finished up that uh, around resilient leadership. And I think the best thing about this approach team members is that it works for all of us. There's a sense of a parallel process. And so if we think about resilience for all of us, leaders, teachers, children, resilience is like a rubber band. Life is what pulls on you. But the literature says we all need protective factors to help us bounce back. So for example, before COVID-19, you probably had things that were pulling on you. Stress, divorce, budgets, health, taking care of an elderly parent. Those things were starting to pull on you. And Chris and team that's listening, there's really not too much we can do about what's pulling on us. No one thought that here on the third week of May, we all would be talking about not leaving our houses or leaving our house with the mask on. Like who would have thought that that would be the case? Those are all things that are pulling on us. Mm -hmm. Chris, you said something when we started that I so agree with you. There is a lesson to be learned here. If we can just sit quietly and figure out and, and just pay attention to what's going on, there's a lesson to be learned here. And so the lesson, are the protective factors. And so what's pulling on you are your risk factors, but your protective factors is what help you bounce back. Another mm -hmm. way to think about it is rain. So risk factors is all the stuff that's raining on you. And for somebody that's listening to us, whether they're listening live or they listen to the recording, you are tired of feeling like you're being rained on. You are tired of it. And the fact that you came, you come to, you go to work, you, you go out and people don't know the cloud that is hanging over you, but you're doing your best. The other thing we always want people to think about is your protective factors are your umbrellas. <laughs> your protective factors are your umbrellas. And so I know people say, ooh, Nefertiti, that's a big cocktail umbrella. And I'm gonna say to you, I've never had a cocktail in my life. <laughs> but what you need team are your protective factors. And so if you're listening to me today as a leader, you have to do this from a full place. You have to have protective factors because your teachers are watching you. Mm -hmm. They are watching how you navigate this crisis. And listen, there are so many parts of me that think we're going to be better when this is over. We just have to sit still and think and work together and lean on your protective factors. One simple thing that we see in research, Chris, is relationships. The world keeps telling us that we can't touch each other. We have to wear a mask. And I agree with all of that for safety reasons. But what I don't want any of us to, to miss out on are the emotional connections. Mm -hmm. I will be physically distant from those that I love and care about right now, but I'm not going to become socially or emotionally distant from them. 
And right. there is a difference. My mother lives in Philadelphia. Chris, I haven't seen her for months. I haven't seen her for months. She's one of the most vulnerable of the population. And I just don't feel comfortable going there or even having her come here yet. And so Nefertiti, what's the protective factor here? Don't let emotions and socialness, the, the, the fact that I can't see her, we can still be connected with this part. And so we play bingo virtually. We talk every day. Chris, my mother came to virtual bingo last week. She is in a Zoom. We do it via Zoom. Mm -hmm. We knew how to change her background. So <laughs> she came to the bingo with some solar system background. <laughs> Smile because yeah. before COVID-19, we would have never figured that out. Right. But here's what I know from the research, and I want your team to think with, with me about this. Relationships matter. Mm -hmm. Relationships are clearly demonstrated in the research as a protective factor. And so if your children are missing their relationships, you know, it's okay for them. At my house, you can talk a little longer at night on FaceTime with your friends because I know you miss that. Yeah. And from a five-year-old who has not seen a child her age in a long, long time. We're just trying to do the best we can to replicate the feeling of friendships. And mommy has become the five-year-old friend. <laughs> so, right. So with that, and those are all really good um, things to keep in mind, Nefertiti. I love the relationship piece. I love the notion of the umbrella and, the, and being stretched. So with those resilient, with those protective factors, what are maybe one or two that you can help us identify? I'm thinking in my, you know, I'm thinking trying to find the silver lining, trying to fill other people's buckets. Those are things that help me finding the positive that we never would have done. Like the bingo example, I, I reconnected recently with some old friends in Chicago. And now every other Wednesday, we have a happy hour Zoom with our old Chicago friends from our 20s. So <laughs> That wouldn't have happened if this hadn't, you know, so there are silver linings. It's just a matter of finding. So that might be one. But what are some other protective factors that you can guide people on? Yep. I think I want to share another one that I think is great for all of us and team members. Very well documented in the research. Believe it or not, a sense of humor. A sense of humor can be a protective factor. Mm -hmm. And so here's what I want you to think about. Go get the corniest joke or that favorite sitcom that you have and just allow yourself that moment of laughter. And sometimes people will say to me in live presentations, Nefertiti, how can you laugh when there's so much going on? And I always wish I had a fancy, sophisticated answer for them. And then I just rely on what I know to be true. It is a choice. See, Chris, this, this pandemic that we're living in, you and I get to choose the attitude we have around it. Your attitude is your choice. CNN News, Fox News, the president or no one else gets to decide how you choose to feel about this. And so if I decide that when this web when we're finished, I'm just going to go tell I tell really corny jokes. Chris, they are awful. I don't know they're bad. And sometimes I say I'm going to get me a new book where I can tell some different ones, but people remember me for my corny jokes. <laughs> and we laugh together. Listen. Yeah. Humor is an umbrella when it is raining. And I also like to think of protective factors as your energy source. Team members, what's your energy source right now? If you and your family can spend a few minutes in simple laughter, that's an energy source that'll just give you a little bit more to deal with what we're dealing with right now. And the good news is that we don't need it for just right now. You're gonna need your protective factors as long as you're on this earth. And I'm just, again, so thankful to be able to talk with you a few minutes about one of my favorite words. <laughs> I love that. So what's coming to mind for me are reruns of Seinfeld and reruns of Friends. Yes. And, um, so I'm gonna go watch some of that tonight and that's super fun. Good. Um, and I like to play where I'm playing games with my team. So Sunday night is hang out with mom night. Okay. Uh, the rest of the nights there with, um, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, even though that's not fully social distancing, distancing, but Sunday night is reserved for siblings and mom's family time. I love so it. we're doing that with a nice dinner and then we're playing games. Good. So playing Uno um, and other card games as well. So those are some strategies. And I love those ideas, Nefertiti, because I'm just trying to get practical ideas to people watching this. Yeah. Um, 
Let's talk a little bit about children. So providing a, an extra level of social, emotional support and care as families are starting to come back into early learning programs. We've got most of our clients and people who are watching, um, the vast majority have been open this entire okay. time serving essential workers, children. Okay. And now they are starting to open more fully step-by-step step and getting, um, you know, six, 10, 15 new children a week coming back in. And so that transition to me is a place where I really want to dig in deeper with you because when children have been home for X number of weeks, missing their, their, um, their friends, their two and three year and four year old friends and their teachers. And then they come back into an environment where teachers are dressed in, um, you know, unfamiliar coverings and masks and maybe children have to wear masks and there's all new temperature taking and these new rules. What are some things that you're helping leaders and teachers with in an early learning setting to help children feel more resilient and comfortable and protected? Certainly. I think before we share some of the strategies, Chris, I want our team that's listening to us to remember, you are going to have to put yourself first before you go into the classrooms with the children. They are. It was already hard to do this work before. People didn't understand what the work that we do before now. They would say things like, I don't know why you're tired. All you do is play with kids all day. And now <laughs> they understand. They, they understand a little bit better. So to our leaders, I'm going to ask that you give yourself permission to put yourself first. So when Chris said her Sunday nights are for her and her family, I wanna encourage you to make the time to care for yourself. And you might say, well, Nefertiti, what does that have to do with anything? Listen, you are going to be asked to do so many different things. You're not gonna be able to do those successfully when you're running on empty. And so I'm gonna suggest that you just put yourself first as you continue through your role as leaders and, and, and those other roles that are listening to me. Now, when we get back in programs and things feel a little bit different, I would like to suggest that we frame everything around safety. When your little four-year-old student looks up at one of your teachers and says, why do you have that on? One of the things you might say to that little one is, my job is to keep you safe. And these things or my body help keep you safe. Now, if that little one asks some more questions, you can engage a little bit more, but my suggestion is to frame everything around safety. Even when it comes back to being in the classroom, some of them have been home where the rules may have been a little different than what we were doing back in our classrooms now. Just remind them that my job as a grown up is to keep you safe and everything that we're doing is to keep you safe. And so I know that sometimes teachers and leaders, we just need a, a quick go-to. I think safety is what we just wanna remind each other that that's what we do here. And everyone we've had a chance to talk to, that's our suggestion. suggestion. It's all about safety. It's all about safety. I love that. So let's, I wanna introduce the, um, our team, our, our viewers, to what's going on at Devereaux with regard to your three-part webinar series oh. that's coming up. So it's called Building Your Bounce, Simple Strategies to Promote the Resilience of You and Your Team. And it's taking place in three consecutive Tuesdays, May 19th, May 26th, and June 2nd. And so we wanted to also bring this three-part webinar series to y'all so that you could hop into that if you want a deeper dive with Nefertiti to really start crafting your resilience and your protective factors and really learning about this bounce, about the, the rubber band and how to really, you know, use that analogy for your teams um, in your early learning environment. So talk a little bit about what's gonna be going on during that, that uh, series. Never sure. One of the best things about being the technology is that we can get this message out to more people. And so um, starting next Tuesday, you're going to meet me right here. We're going to be right here. And one of the first things that happens, we're hoping that will happen through the series is we're going to create a tribe or a village. Team members, there is an old African proverb that says it takes a village to raise a child. We have all heard that at least once or twice in our life. I became a mother later in life. I have a five-year-old who has shown, told me, showed me, <laughs> taught me that it's not just a village that you need. The village needs to be healthy. You have to have a healthy mm. village to raise healthy children. And then 
The um, other thing I wanted just to kind of close out this session with is an insight that I just gained from you, Nefertiti, which is about choice. And so a, a quick story is that somebody on my team who's actually my, one of my employees, and I, um, I don't want to say her name because I don't want her to feel weird, but she shared with me yesterday that she has never been so scared and anxious and fearful in her life that both of her daughters who are at risk, one's a nurse and one has health issues and they're young. They're, um, you know, in their late teens, early twenties. And she was very scared that she would lose both of her daughters that when this happened, she visualized them both passing that they would die from this disease. And so that fear was always up here for her. And she wrote to me and said, thank you so much for being a strong leader for our company during this time, because, somehow you always just seem so focused on the positive and you turn my mindset around every day to the positive. And so I think it's because it's a choice because I've gotten used to choosing positive and choosing humor and choosing those umbrella factors. Somehow over the last decade of doing this work, Nefertiti, I've gotten into almost a routine of going to the positive and providing that for people all the time. And so for me, looking at the gloom and doom of the situation and listening to the pundits saying this is going to be with us for 18 months like that's just not a reality for me i'm just like i'm not listening to it i'm just living one day at a time and i'm going to just put all that positivity that i can to the universe and uh, that's all i can do is just be that positive force for people and so i just wanted to put that out there because you guys as leaders I want you to help think about how you can turn it around for yourselves and embrace that spirit. It is a choice and it is not something that the president or Anthony Fauci or anybody is going to tell you how to feel about this for yourself and for your people and to be there for them hundred percent. So I just love that you really drove that home Nefertiti today. And um, any other thoughts before we close as we want to share um, these ideas with our audience? Because you do, you, you could go to the other side and just lament, uh, lament, lament about the challenges that are going on. You know, another risk factor that we sometimes do is rumination. Like we just sit in the muck forever. And I call it, it's like sitting in a rocking chair. You just talk about all that's going wrong and what the world is coming to an end and you don't go anywhere. So I say, get out the rocking chair, keep ourselves safe. We're going to do everything we can to keep ourselves safe. Yes. But my attitude is my choice. And for those people that say, well, Nefertiti again, how do you do? It's a choice. And I don't need another thing to give me a gray hair or an extra pound. I don't need any of that help. None of it. None of it. So I'm just going to choose. And again, Chris, it doesn't mean that we're not giving recognition to the hard stuff. Yes. It's just you're going to need energy to deal with that stuff. And mm -hmm. so please bring your resilience and protective factors along to help you deal with the hard stuff. Because your example, that's that's hard that your your staff member yeah. you energy and your resilience and your protective factors can be a, an energy source. So I could talk to you forever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's funny, I'll close with one other personal story. When we first started this journey back in March 15th, I was missing my daughter's first dance competition, missing spring break. And then my son is graduating from high school and our poor seniors they have lost out on so much. They've lost out on their big send off, their prom, their graduation, all these things that they had planned. But what we're doing in our local school district is we are doing a drive by graduation in the parking lot with a podium, with speakers, and then everybody's gonna get out of their decorated cars with their caps and gowns and they're gonna call the names on the radio station locally. They're gonna all wave their diploma when their name is called and then a big honking, festival crazy and then they're going to all flap, flap their tassel at the same time or throw the cap up and then we're going to go on a car parade around town well, this has never <laughs> been done before right so we get to be part of a brand new type of celebration which actually could be more fun than sitting in a yes, gym, yes, right? yes i agree um, yeah. Anyway, you got to you got to think about it. You got to pivot it. You got to create and figure out ways to make it. And this is our creative side coming up. It's like, how can we create goodness? That's it. And shift it for people. And uh, that's what you're exactly what you're going to be teaching. Creativity is a protective factor. It's yeah. in the research. Creativity is a protective factor. So you guys felt the rain and you grabbed your umbrella. That's what you did. Yeah. You felt the rain and you grabbed your umbrella. So, oh, I can't I videotape it. I want to see how that turned out.
Uh, well, the whole thing's going to be videotaped and then okay. they compile it and provide it. So we'll have it for, for posterity. So the oh, book, be great. So Nefertiti's book is called Building Your Bounce. Yep. Simple, simple Strategies for a More Resilient You. And um, you guys can grab that. Is that on Amazon, Nefertiti, or is that at your website? Actually, I'm trying to remember. I don't think it's on Amazon, but if you put our website link in the description, then we sell it on our website. Yeah. So your team members can get it there. And there's a tool that you guys provided, and we're going to put a link to that tool as well. Remember, um, people talk a little bit about that tool, if you would. Yeah. When I told you that there were some behaviors that you and I can think about to build our resilience, the DARS, the Devereaux Adult Resilience Survey, you can get a copy of that. It's free. You can share it. I say take it on your next date because as a leader, you might also be dating and you need the person you're dating to be resilient too. So take it to that person and <laughs> invite me to the wedding because that's going to be a good marriage built on resilience. So Ooh. I'm going to give that to my boyfriend. I love it. it See how it goes. See Great how it goes. advice. I love it. So it's called uh, the dogs. Well, we could hang out all day and we would have so much fun. This is great. Thank you so much, Dr. Nefertiti Pointer. It's been a joy. And thank, thank you for you. spending time with us today. I appreciate you. Thank you. See you soon, everyone. Bye-bye. See you soon, guys. Bye.